Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Hi, and welcome to another video in our series on IGCSE Economics. This is Unit 6, Part 2. In today's lesson we will be learning about employment and unemployment. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. How do we monitor employment trends? What figures do we use to monitor employment and unemployment? This is a series of definitions that you must remember. Firstly, labor force. The labor force, also called workforce, is the population of able-bodied, willing people who are currently employed or looking for work. If you are not looking for work, you are not included. Next, labor force participation rate. The labor force participation rate refers to the number of people available for work as a percentage of the total population that is of working age. Employment by industrial sector. This is just a measure of what percentage of people work in primary, secondary or tertiary sectors. Another way you could think about this is the number of people that work in agriculture, manufacture and services. Employment status. This is the number of people employed in full-time, part-time, or in temporary work. Finally, unemployment. This is the number of people registered as being unemployed as a proportion of the total labor force. This is often called the unemployment rate. What do global trends in employment look like? As you can see from the graph, employment has increased over time in line with growth in the economy, or population. But, unemployment has varied over time with the health of the global economy. We are currently going through a global pandemic, which has shrunk the size of the global economy. Unsurprisingly, unemployment is rising quickly during this time. Who are the working and dependent populations? The labor force is shown between the red arrows. The population outside these arrows are the dependent populations. The labor force participation rate measures the percentage of the population of working age that is economically active, for example, either in work or looking for work and therefore able to produce goods and services. What does the labor force participation rate look like? This graph shows the labor force participation rate in various parts of the world. On the left is shown the male participation rate. On the right is the female participation rate. Male participation rates have been falling. Traditional male-dominated sectors such as mining and manufacturing industries have been shrinking, particularly in many developed countries. Female participation rates have been rising. The cost of living is rising in many countries, it is now more acceptable for women to work in many cultures, service industries are growing, and there are more part-time jobs. What are the causes and types of unemployment? Firstly, frictional unemployment, this is short-lived unemployment as people change jobs. This is normal in an economy. Seasonal unemployment, this is temporary unemployment because some production and consumer demand is seasonal. These are people like fruit pickers or Christmas tree salespeople. Cyclical unemployment, this is the prolonged, widespread unemployment during an economic recession due to falling in depressed aggregate demand. Example of this was the global recession of the late 2000s, or currently during the pandemic. Finally, structural unemployment, this is long-lived unemployment caused by industrial decline, many workers are made unemployed and have skills that are no longer wanted. This is when industries disappear. This has happened with steel manufacturing in the USA. The labor market is sometimes far from an ideal market. Labor market failures and imperfections may restrict employment opportunities. Powerful trade unions may restrict the supply of labor to an occupation to boost wages. The payment of unemployment benefits may reduce the supply of labor and increase voluntary unemployment. High non-wage costs, including employers' contributions to fund publicly provided unemployment and welfare benefits, may reduce the demand for labor. Minimum wage laws may reduce the demand for less skilled labor. 
Labor immobility can prevent unemployed people from moving to new jobs. Other causes of market failures can be Occupational immobility Inability to move to a new occupation because a worker lacks transferable skills Geographic immobility Inability to move location to take a new job because of family ties and commitments, for example, children at school, or regional differences in house prices make it unaffordable. What are the costs of unemployment? These can be broken down into general categories. The personal costs include loss of income, possible loss of self-esteem, leading to depression, health and marriage problems. The costs to government include loss of income tax revenue, higher public spending on unemployment and welfare benefits. The cost to an economy, unemployment is a waste of resources, output is lower than what it could otherwise be. Taxes may have to rise to pay for increased welfare payments. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.